Hello and welcome to our program and the topic of this program is important features and life cycle of Pythium. The cytoplasm contains numerous small randomly dispersed nuclei. Mitochondria and dictyosomes. Endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes are abundant in the young hyphae. Reserve food material is in the form of glycogen and additionally it occurs as oil globule. Pythium reproduces both asexually and sexually. The reproductive phase sets on before the death of the host in case of parasitic species. However, asexual mode is the most common while sexual reproduction occurs mostly towards the end of the growing season. Now, asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is favored by humid conditions. It occurs by means of following three methods. Number one, direct germination of sporangium. Number second, by means of zoospores. Number third, by means of gemme.
of the mature zoospores. The released zoospores swim and scatter in all directions. The tinsel flagellum is directed forward and the longer whiplash trails behind while swimming. After swimming actively for a period, the zoospores slow their movements and become quiescent, retract their flagella, become spherical, secrete a wall around themselves and become encysts to form cytospores or cysts. The cyst, on the arrival of favorable conditions, either directly germinates to establish a new mycelium or it gives rise to secondary zoospores which then germinate to establish the mycelium. Number third, by means of gemme, these are asexual reproductive structures formed intercalary. Occasionally they develop thick walls and are called chlamydospores. The gemme or chlamydospores on germination produce a long and tubular hypha. Now, sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is oogamous type and takes place towards the end of the growing season when the food is almost exhausted and moisture is the least. Most of the species are homothallic, while some of the species are heterothallic. In mature oogonium, all the nuclei except one and the vacuoles migrate to the periphery whereas reserve vesicles and lipid vesicles move inwards and accumulate in its central area. At the time of fertilization, the oogonium is differentiated into two zones. Number one, periplas. The outer zone lining the oogonial wall is called periplas. It contains spongy or vacuolated protoplast and contains surplus nuclei, mitochondria and other organelles. Number second, oaplas. It is the central portion of the oogonium filled with granular and dense cytoplasm. It has reserve food in the form of lipid vacuoles and reserve vesicles. The nucleus is central in position.
anteridial contact. In mature antheridium, the protoplast is differentiated into a central uninucleate portion, which functions as the male gamete and the outer zone called periplasm. The surplus nuclei and other organelles migrate into the periplasm where they later on degenerate. During fertilization, tip of the antheridium presses itself closely to the oogonial wall. The intervening walls on the mature sex organs dissolve at the point of contact. The flattened tip of the antheridium puts out a fine tubular process. The tube penetrates the oogonial wall through the pore, purses the periplasm and dips into the oaplasm. The tube opens and emits a single male nucleus with good amount of cytoplasm. The male gamete mingles with the egg and results in the fusion of male and female nuclei. Karyogamy may take place immediately or a little before oospore germination. Soon after fertilization, All the stages in life cycle except gametes are deployed in nature. The somatic mycelial stage, sex organs, asexual reproductive stages and zygote represent a deployed phase. This type of life cycle is characterized by gametic meiosis. Now diseases caused by pythium. Pythium constitutes one of the most destructive groups of plant pathogens, causing many diseases in wide range of hosts from algae to man and the species tend to be very generalistic and unspecific in their host range. The pathogenic species of Pythium mainly affect the juvenile or succulent tissues and restrict their parasitism to seedlings. Feeder roots or root tips of older plants 
and to watery fruits or stem tissues. The diseases caused by the fungus are damping off, pythium blight, root rot, fruit rot, etc. However, most common and economically important disease is damping off. Damping off diseases are of two types, pre-emergence damping off and post-emergence damping off. Pre-emergence damping off When seeds of susceptible plants are planted in infested soils and are attacked by the damping off fungus, they fail to germinate, become soft and mushy, then turn brown, shrink and finally disintegrate. Seed infection results in the form of poor stamps. It may also be manifested in the form of infection of the germinated seedlings when these have not emerged above the soil line. Post-emergence damping off Seedlings that have already emerged are usually attacked at the roots and sometimes at or below the soil line. When the roots decompose, the steli is left intact to leave only a white strand which is followed by seedling death. Damping off disease is widely distributed all over the world. The disease affects seeds, seedlings and older plants of almost all kinds of vegetables, flowers, cereals, fruit and forest trees. The disease causes extensive damage to many solanaceous and other crop plants in seed beds, nurseries and in greenhouses. In all cases, the greatest damage is done to the seed and seedling roots during germination, either before or after emergence. This is all we have for you in this program. Thank you for watching. Take good care of yourselves. Goodbye.